Today I am in Grand Rapids. I'm at the kind of the front half of a three week tour with Crowder. Then I'll be home for a few days and then we're in and out basically between now and Thanksgiving. Today marks the first week um, of a course release that I'm doing here on YouTube. If you've been following the channel for a little while, then you might remember a couple of years ago, I released a course on parts and layering parts. Um, that uh, originally was a course that you could purchase and then uh, you know view and download and all that stuff. But now I'm actually moving that all on YouTube for free. So this week will be the first part of that. And then hopefully every week after this, you'll be seeing the next installments for the next seven weeks total. The goal of the course was to kind of give you some insight on how I think about coming up with guitar parts, how I think about layering guitar parts. And the thing that I love about this course is that it's super practical. I try to break down things um, in a way that whether you're a beginner or more advanced, it just allows you to think about coming up with parts, what types of parts you need or will complement what's already going on. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy this. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen this. The course will be available for purchase up until the end of the year. And if you've purchased it previously, then you should definitely go and download it there because at the end of the year, I'm gonna be taking all of that stuff down from the course website and it will just be available here on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoy. In this first section, we're gonna talk about some general ideas and concepts when it comes to layering and creating new guitar parts. The big idea here is that we want to give each part its own sonic space. When we're successful at this, then each part should be able to be heard more clearly and they should all contribute in some way to the overall picture. When we're unsuccessful at this, it can just sound cluttered and chaotic. The first idea may seem simple, but a lot of times we overlook it, and that's to figure out what we're trying to accomplish with a part. Are we trying to make things feel bigger or more full? Are we trying to add some kind of interest because maybe things are boring? You know, I might add a big rhythm guitar because I think things need to sound bigger, or I might add a simple single note rhythm part because it needs some kind of rhythmic interest. A lot of times, just by identifying maybe what's missing, we can figure out what type of part we need to add. So one way we can give each part its own space is by being aware of the range that we are playing our parts in. So I like to divide this up into three sections. I like to think of low parts, middle parts, and high parts. So our low parts, you know, it might be something on the E and the A string, or maybe the D string, and then so on and so forth. But by kind of divvying up our parts in different ranges of the guitar, it ensures that parts aren't going to step on each other. They're not gonna be in the same area, and it gives each one its own space. <laughs> Another way that we can give our parts their own unique space is by using different types of tones. Now, one easy way to do this is to vary the amount of gain we're using. Maybe one part is cleaner, maybe one part's dirtier, and anywhere in between. 
we can either do this by gaining up an amp or using different overdrive pedals. You see a lot of session guitarists who have multiple overdrive pedals on their board and you know will double parts with a different type of overdrive or might use a certain type of overdrive for a lead sound but then the rhythm part is a different overdrive. All of these things are ways that they're giving each guitar part its own sonic footprint. Now, another way we can do this is with other types of effects, whether it be delay or modulation, filter effects, octave effects. All of these are ways that we can change the sound of our guitar to make parts stand out and have their own unique sound. Another obvious way to change up our sound is by using different guitars. If you've seen some of my demos, then you know that I'm using at least three or four guitars in every video. And for me, this gives me a variety of tones for each part. That doesn't mean that you have to have tons of gear to get a lot of different sounds. It could be as simple as using different pickup selections on your guitar. It could be a way of changing your playing technique. Maybe you're playing closer to the bridge for one part, or you're playing closer to the neck on another part. There are lots of different ways to change up your tone, but just keeping it in mind when you're layering parts will help each part have its own space. When I'm layering parts and I'm coming up with new ideas, one way that I like to kind of think about things and divide things up is thinking about two categories. Now, these are really generalized, but I think about long parts and short parts. Long parts are longer notes, they're held out notes, and short parts are shorter. Now, I don't necessarily mean staccato, I just mean more rhythmically. They have more rhythmic interest going on in what I consider a short part. For me, thinking about parts in this manner kind of helps me identify what might be missing. Long parts give support, they fill things out, they can make things feel really big, or they can just provide a bed under, you know, maybe there's a number of rhythmic parts already happening. And so this can kind of help fill in the gaps and support things. Short parts are going to give us interest and energy. They're going to give us a rhythmic feel to the song, um, more so than we would have if it were just all long notes. By thinking about parts in these two generalized ways, it helps me quickly and easily figure out what kind of part I need to add. Does it need a short part that has more rhythmic interest or does it need a long part that's going to help fill things out and kind of bring everything together? When I identify what's needed in these two categories, it allows me to have a variety of different types of parts that gives each part its own space and contributes to the whole. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hopefully some of this info was helpful for you. And if you aren't already, definitely hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications. Again, there'll be six more videos, very similar to this, diving in even deeper on kind of my take, my thoughts around creating and layering guitar parts. Thanks guys.